Well, I'm out in my foundry now, and here's the pattern, and I added these little uh, extensions on the end, which are actually uh, gates th that are uh, built in. And uh, I made the mold already, and this is a rather large mold. This is a 12 by 14 flask, 4 inches thick, and that's the biggest flask I've got. As a matter of fact, I've never used this one before. They are used, but I, I never put it to use before. But uh, we got both halves made. That would be halves made. And the, we've got a sprue on one side and a riser or a vent on the other end. And they're pretty close to the edge here. It's kind of scary. Kind of delicate in there, but that's the best I could do. And we're going to close the mold here momentarily and pour the casting. Now, when I pour these bigger castings, I had to make a bigger pot. It's not really a crucible. A crucible, it's an iron steel pot that I welded together, but it's about uh, 10 or 11 inches long and it'll hold plenty of aluminum compared to the little one that I normally use. And uh, you always want to make sure you have enough because you can't add more once the pour has been completed. So hopefully in an hour or two I will have uh, a good casting to show you that I will break out. About 90 minutes has passed since I uh, made the last little segment here, so I've taken the flask apart, and let's see what we got. Still plenty hot, as you can see. You understand I'm trying to hold the camera and do this all at once here. Looks like it might be a good one. I'm going to turn the camera off for a minute and clean this up and then resume. It's May 1st in Illinois and the grass is green and the trees are in full leaf. And the lilacs are blooming. And here's the finished casting and it looks to be a good one. I don't see any defects that, at least not that matter. still hot and it's spitting rain here and uh, I'm glad I got that pour done because nothing can be much more dangerous than water and molten metal. See you in a few hours in the basement shop. It is rather gratifying to see your uh, pattern go from wood to uh, aluminum casting and the engine itself will sit upon these bosses so now you can see what those are for just raise it up and give it define the space where it's going to be bolted on and then uh, the next thing I'm going to do is mill out the well here for the uh, flywheel and then I'll take off the gates sand it just a little bit and we are sure nearing completion finally Here's the setup on the Bridgeport mill to mill out the well for the uh, flywheel. I do have layout lines on there. I'm not sure if they show up. We got about a 9 16 end mill here and just a simple milling job and that'll only take about five minutes. Eight minutes has passed and we've got this uh, well all milled out and ready to go. I left the rim around there and that's strictly for appearance sake. Well, we've got the frame finally bolted onto the base. Wasn't much to show you on that. Just transfer the holes with transfer punches. Got her bolted down, reassembled, and ready to run again. And then we got to paint it. And really that's our last step is painting. So runner again here.
got all the bolts on the bottom. There was only uh, two on there before. Now we got six bolts on the top and on, on the bottom. See how nicely the flywheel fits into the slot? Okay, next time you see it, hopefully I'll have a finished coat of paint on it and uh, summarize and wrap up this video, which has been longer than the journeys of Ulysses. Since our last session, uh, I've done a few things. Uh, number one, I did put uh, silicone seal as a, instead of gaskets on both ends here of the cylinder. And we got a coat of paint on there. Cleaned it up real good, degreased it spray painted it. I'm not real sure about the color. I was going to make it maroon, but this looks more like burgundy or something like that, but it'll have to do with the black flywheel. I don't have a great sense of color, so that's what you see is what we got. I'm going to reassemble it here in a little while when the paint is totally dry. Grease it up good, and that'll be the final assembly. And uh, then we'll run her again and review what we did in the past three months. I must confess, I'm glad that I'm finally bringing this uh, project to a conclusion. It's been longer than Tolstoy's uh, War and Peace. And you know, about three-fourths of the time was spent on pattern making, which uh, in a way is a waste when you're making only one engine, but that's the way you get there. And uh, be sure and go back and see the other uh, videos. I think this is going to be in 10 parts altogether, uh, which at 10 minutes each is ew, over 90 minutes or around 90 minutes. But uh, remember, this is the, uh, the main frame, and uh, there's the cylinder pattern and the core that produced the hollow void in the casting for the uh, piston and some assorted castings, and then the base, which was the most recent one. Got her all back together, and we're going to run it. Remember, we got about a two and a half inch uh, bore and an eight and a half inch flywheel. Don't ask me how much, uh, how many horsepower this is or anything like that. I, I don't know, and uh, it doesn't matter. This is strictly for the fun of it. There is absolutely no use for this engine. Now that it's complete, it was just fun making it. I'm running this on about 10 pounds of compressed air. And I suppose it's uh, around about 50 to 60 RPM. And uh, runs pretty nice. Might be a few little adjustments I still have to make. got exhaust coming out of uh, this little pipe and I think I'll put another little pipe down there just for the heck of it. It just doesn't serve any purpose. Thank you for looking at all these videos and uh, I'm going to ride into the sunset now for a while. Uh, this is Tubal Kane saying so long from steam engine land.